Hi, and welcome to Filled with His Love. I don't know if you saw this the other day on 60 Minutes, but Anderson Cooper interviewed Prince Harry. Very interesting interview. If I were to sum it up, I would say that it was an expose on a dysfunctional family. And what family was it, of course? The British royal family. Harry listed a number of grievances he has with his family, grievances that he would like to see resolved, but grievances nonetheless. In an article about the interview, Stephen Petro, a columnist, wrote, quote, Harry's litany of grievances proved long, but probably not longer than mine about my family or what I hear from many of my friends about theirs. Who doesn't have an abusive father or a cheating mother, an alcoholic or a drug user, among their own? End quote. You may not be able to concur that you have an abusive father, a cheating mother, an alcoholic or drug user in your immediate family, but I'm quite certain that in your circle of close friends or extended family members, you do know of such individuals. What percent of people grow up in dysfunctional families? What is your guess? 30%? 50%? Unfortunately, it's much worse than that. In a recent survey, 70 to 80% of all Americans consider their families dysfunctional. They, they're not saying their families when they were young children and, and now everything is hunky-dory and everything's fixed up and nice. No, they're saying they live in dysfunctional families right now. Yes, a strong majority of Americans grow up in dysfunctional families. This is not a pretty scene, and it's, it's not pretty at all. So what is a dysfunctional family? I'm going to list the characteristics of dysfunction, and as you hear each characteristic, see if you can think of someone you know who lives in a family with that characteristic. Okay, here's number one. One or both parents has a substance abuse or mental health condition that prevents them from being able to parent in healthy ways. Already that one characteristic picks up a lot of families. Two, children are parentified. Interesting word, but it means they take on too many responsibilities, such as taking care of a sick parent. I have seen this in people I know. Number three, parents are absent so children are left to fend for themselves. Next one, there's violence in the household. Children are abused or there's partner abuse between parents. Next, there are no clear boundaries or rules within the family, leading to chaos and neglect. Next one, the family is ruled by one dominant member who doesn't consider the wants or needs of the other members. Next one, there's no demonstration of love or affection between family members. Next one, family members invade each other's personal privacy without consent. Next one, communication is stifled and children aren't allowed to express themselves. Next, there's physical, sexual, or emotional abuse. Next one, parents expect perfection from their children. Next one, adherence to authoritarian rules is expected with no flexibility. So why do I think it's so essential to think about these characteristics of dysfunctional families? It's not pleasant, actually, but I think it's very important because children who grow up in such families have extreme difficulty forming healthy relationships with God and with others. There's no question that people can overcome the effects of dysfunction, but it's not easy. And I believe the surest way to overcome such problems is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those in dysfunctional families need to forgive one another. They need to put the past behind them and move on. They need to forget the pain that was caused by an abusive or neglectful parent or an alcoholic sibling. And Christ is the one who can help them forgive and forget and move forward. Now, let's look at the characteristics of a functional family. This is a little bit happier scene. First one, family members enjoy spending time together. They're able to have fun together despite daily stress and responsibilities. Next one, rules and roles. For the most part, every member of the family sticks to the rules. But a crucial feature of, 
of a functional family is that the rules are flexible and can change as members of the family grow and change. Part of these established rules is that there are boundaries in place. For example, children aren't brought into conflicts between parents, and parents don't try to act like their children's peers. Very interesting characteristic to me. Next one, family members respect one another. The adults are respected as the people in charge, but children are also respected as individuals with their own personalities and desires. Every child is treated equally, and siblings aren't made to compete against each other for their parents' love. Next one, no abuse or neglect. Parents provide care for their children, and children aren't expected to take on adult responsibilities. Every member of the family feels safe, and the home is free from violence, both physical and psychological. Next one. Engage. They engage in healthy conflict. Conflict is allowed in a functional family. When someone doesn't agree, they're allowed to express their emotion in respectful ways. No one is shamed for experiencing conflict or for experiencing appropriate emotion. Next one. The family celebrates individual differences. Family members are encouraged to have their own feelings about things. The family can change, including parents and children, without anyone getting upset. Now, that's the list of characteristics for the functional family. Hopefully, you could also recognize each of these characteristics in your own family and the families of your friends. We've been reading about John the Baptist this week. And in his first and foremost calling, this was his most important thing he came on earth to do, was to cry repentance, as all prophets do. And once people repented, his role was to baptize them. In the movie The Chosen, they call him, they don't call him John the Baptist, they call him John the Baptizer. I kind of like this, it's kind of a, an active verb there. He's going around baptizing all these people. That's what he was. He invited people to follow the example of Jesus and enter the waters of baptism and be washed clean. He was helping people make the baptismal covenant to take the name of the Savior upon them. He was bringing people into the fold or family of God. I explained in an earlier episode that when we make covenants with God, we become the children of Christ. We become his sons and his daughters. This is the ultimate functional family. But it is in the keeping of those covenants that our families draw close to the Lord and we learn to love one another. That is why daily repentance, as President Nelson has taught, is so important. We don't learn to love and respect each other overnight. It's a lifelong endeavor. One way to view the proclamation on the family is to see it as a blueprint for the functional family, the way to become the children of Christ and be united in the fold of God. Functional families, I believe, follow the teachings of the Savior. As the proclamation says, quote, happiness in family life is most likely to be achieved when founded upon the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Successful marriages and families are established and maintained on principles of faith, prayer, repentance, forgiveness, respect, love, compassion, work, and wholesome recreational activities, end quote. That is such a powerful list, and it's a list that I think did not come quickly as they crafted and were inspired to write the proclamation. That short list, I think, encompasses the list of characteristics of functional families. So here's my invitation. I hope you'll take a look at your own family and see if there is one of the characteristics of a functional family or in the list and the proclamation I just shared that you could improve upon. I would be certain that there probably is, there is for us, there is for every family. My hope and prayer is that we can all have functional families and help each other in the parenting and family responsibilities that we have with our neighbors and friends and extended family members. See you next time.